Hello world, uh, today I want to show you the LM512 being used with an interesting piece of vintage hardware. Um, I'll just start out by saying that this is proving to be uh, quite a difficult video to, to shoot. I'm having a lot of trouble getting my camera's uh, autofocus to stay uh, focused because there's a, a lot of beige in this shot at the moment uh, and very little uh, fine detail. Um, and then later on when I have uh, text on the screen is even worse. So I've got some, some masking tape here with um you know sharp geometric type patterns on here which I, I hope are gonna make this uh clear enough that you can watch so fingers crossed. Um alright what do I have here? Um at first glance this looks like an old CRT monitor. Um it's actually quite a bit more than that. It's it's a serial terminal um or a, a dumb terminal um and in particular it's the model VT510 from uh, Digital Equipment Corporation, or DEC. Um, so, yeah, yes, VT510 is part of the same series as the venerable VT100, which, uh, you know, everything you use today, all your modern Unix terminal emulators are emulating um, that VT100, and this is a, a descendant of that machine. And, um, yes, this is, this is Digital or DEC, uh, as famous for the, the PDP, uh, and VAX mini computers, and later on the the Alpha Micro computers. Uh, so this is um, you know, this is a bit of hardware with a fairly uh, sort of impressive pedigree, I suppose. Uh, you know, it's the not quite the last, but one of the very last um, terminals in this kind of long and famous series. So let's flip it around so you can get a look at the back. Um, I might need to move the camera a little bit here. So what have we got? Um, we've got power coming in here through a standard um, IEC connector. We've got a, an old PS2 um, keyboard port. Obviously this this thing uh, predates USB. You can't read it, but there's a date code down here. This is in February 1995. So this is um, pretty late in the game for a serial terminal. I don't think a lot of people were using these, uh, you know, by, by the mid 90s. Certainly none of the computers I was using at that time had uh, had serial terminals, we had, um, you know, real, real monitors. Um, there's a, uh, <clears throat> uh, there's a DB25 parallel connector here for a printer, and then there are two DB25, um, serial, uh, RS232 ports here. Um, one of them with, with female pins, and one of them with, uh, with male pins. Um, and so I've got a 25 to 9 pin, um, you know, uh, sub D miniature adapter here. Um, when, when you use a 25 pin connector for RS232, um, a lot of those pins are just uh, grounds for the sake of signal integrity, and so you know you can really easily boil this down to uh, to nine pins. And yeah, a lot of the other pins are modem specific stuff like ring indicators, that kind of stuff. Uh, so you can boil a lot of that down one of these adapters, and then I've just got a um, a null modem cable here, and so one end of this is connected to the terminal, and the other end goes straight to the um, the LM512. And so, you know, back in back in the old days, if you were going to use this, you would have had uh, this hooked up to a modem. Um, that modem would have dialed another modem somewhere else, and that modem's uh, serial cable would have been connected to the computer you wanted to use. Um, and so, you know, both computers, like the LM512, and the serial terminal, um, expect to be connected to modems. And so if you connect them directly, uh, without a modem in the picture, you need a, a null modem cable, which just um, switches around one pair of wires in there so that the um, you know, receive pin on, on one end goes to the transmit on the other and, and vice versa and everything works out. Um, behind this strange little flap here, there is a, um, oh, this actually comes all the way out, there's like a little uh, socket or a port here where you can stick in, I believe, a... Um, a little ra uh, ROM cartridge, sorry, a ROM cartridge. Uh, I'm not sure if that's just for installing new fonts on the terminal, or if you can actually upgrade the entire firmware, I, I don't remember, but, um, yeah, so that's, that's all there is on the back. Let's flip it back around now. And, if that's in screen, which it mostly is, um, power it up. So it'll beep. Um, and after it spends a few seconds running its uh, running this kind of power on self test and the CRT's wound up, we get we get a welcome message if my camera will focus on it. 
not going to focus. Oh, 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 very nice. Uh, hello YouTube, self-test okay. So, um, this might be a surprising message. Uh, no, digital did not foresee the rise of YouTube back in February 1995. Um, one of the interesting features of this terminal is that you can actually, um, you can define your own welcome message, which it stores, I guess, in a, an EE prompt or something like that inside the terminal, and it displays that every time you power it up. Um, and it goes away as soon as you uh, hit a key. Um, a slight annoyance, uh, I think, that the, you know, whatever key you hit to clear that message, um, the corresponding byte actually gets sent over the serial channel. It's not just kind of thrown away as a uh, screen clearing, you know, key press. It actually gets transmitted, which is kind of silly in my opinion. But um, it doesn't matter because right now the LM512 is turned off, so that that byte doesn't get interpreted. Um, so I guess before I actually switch the LM512 on. Uh, I just wanted to show you that this this terminal, um, you know, being uh, a fairly late late model terminal in the mid '90s, um, it, you know, has some capabilities that something like a VT100 wouldn't have. It's got its own menu system. Um, if you're using a standard PC keyboard, you access that by pressing Alt and Print Screen, I think. Yep. And so here we get a, a terminal setup menu where you can, um, you know, do all kinds of things. You can change how many uh, columns and lines of characters you have on the screen, so you can switch between 80 columns or 132 columns. Um, you know, you can configure uh, your serial settings, um, you know, parity bits, stop bits, board rates, um, you know, hardware flow control, that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, you can configure your printer, you can set up, change the language for the whole thing, you can stick the menu in German or back into English. Um, and there are even um you know there are even a couple of little utilities in here somewhere where are they um all oh, right so there's a, there's a calculator uh you can bring up and and use um which is kind of kind of cute and there's there's a clock and, and all sorts but um yeah I, I might later on show you um one of the settings you can fiddle with which is the um the scrolling settings because they're they're kind of neat but um so for now I'm gonna uh power up the LM512 and hit the reset switch and hopefully, yep, there we go. Uh, welcome to LM512 microcomputer system. So this is the same uh, prompt that you've seen before on my um, on my PC screen in a terminal emulator, but now it's it's you know displayed here on an on an actual terminal. So there is uh, you know there's there's no, no modern hardware involved at all here. Um, you know this is uh, exactly the same kind of thing you could go back in time to the 70s and find anywhere. And so if you know if you took the LM512 with you. Um, you know, you really could use this um, back in the 70s because it's using the that standard plus minus 12 volt RS232 uh, serial uh, hardware hardware standard. Um, so even though you know most of the time I'm using it on a the next laptop, and you know you're seeing everything happening through you know GNU screen running an, an X term sort of thing, uh, that's not that's not necessary. It, it's it's all uh, you know done the the proper old school way. So that's um. Let's have a look. Uh, this the the ROM code in the Alphator has changed a bit since I last did a video, but I won't explain any of that today. I'll just um, oops, do a a memory dump so you get some nice things on screen. You can see it working. Um, and you you can hear um that nice little little well I say nice. Uh, it's really irritating, especially on cell phones. But that little synthesized tick with every keystroke. Um, you can turn that off in the menus if you like. But, uh, you know, yeah, it, you know, it's, I guess, nothing too impressive to look at, but it's, it's kind of neat to, um, to use this machine using, uh, you know, an, an uh, period authentic uh, user interface. Um, and so I'll, I'll show you those uh, scroll settings I mentioned. Um, oh, well, actually, uh, oops, how do I get out of this? First, I'll, um, so I'll do another memory dump. And... Pay attention to the way. So I'll, I'll um, keep going through the menu. You can see the way it's scrolling there. It's fairly um, unremarkable, right? Each line just disappears off the top of the screen when you get to the bottom. Um, what you can actually do is uh, change. Where is it? Uh, display scrolling mode. You can change it from jump, which is what it's on currently, to um, slow smooth. So let's put on slow move and do another memory dump. And you get this kind of nice uh, J 
gentle gliding, um, you know, done by the, the hardware of the terminal. Um, and of course, it's a similar sort of thing if you set it to fast smooth. Um, it just scrolls a bit faster, but uh, you know that's that's kind of neat, I guess. But um, yeah, and that's about all there is to it. Um, it's it's quite nice to use, you know. Um, they did um, they made this terminal in in uh, four colors, um, and I got the this is paper white, which is you know the least awesome of them all. Uh, you know, if you grew up using using DOS machines, um, this this display is is quite boring. But of course, they also made this in um, you know, all the the classic uh, phosphors, green and uh, cyan and and uh, amber. Um, I wish I'd been able to get one of those, but um, I mean, I'm happy that I got this at all. I never thought I'd actually get a an old uh, serial terminal like this, especially not not in New Zealand. Um, but uh, I did, and I got it quite cheap because the CRT is um sort of not properly. Uh, it, it's a little bit loose inside the case, so it's it, you know it's a slightly precarious thing. So it, I got it uh, in an online auction for not a lot of money at all. Um, I, you know, I don't think I'm going to use it regularly. Um, it's it's fun to play with, but uh, at the end of the day, um, it eats up a tremendous amount of desk space. Uh, you know, I, I'd forgotten what these CRT displays were like. Um, you know, they they really they really are big and they're heavy. Um, and, you know, I, I need to have a PS, you know, if I wanted to use this as my main way of using the LM512, um, you know, I've got to have this on my desk, uh, I've got to have, you know, my, my monitor on my desk for my Linux machine to do the development, I've got to have a PS2 keyboard plugged into here, US2, uh, USB, sorry, keyboard um, plugged into that one, you know, it just, you know, suddenly it's it's a huge pain in the, in the behind, I've got, you know, two displays and two keyboards on my desk, and I got to switch back and forth between the keyboards. It's um, to be honest, it's, it's a lot easier using the um the terminal emulator in Linux. So, you know, and I've I've done this video um, you know, I might use this for the next next one or two videos, I guess, if I do them soon enough. But uh, I think pretty soon I'll um, you know, probably move this on to someone else who can who can use it. Someone with a you know, some real vintage machines maybe who wants a, a terminal. But uh, yeah, no, it was neat to um to get this and to use it, and this is the first time I've used a serial terminal, I've only read about them before, so it's, you know, it's, it's kind of cool, it's a bit different. But, uh, yeah, so, LM512, um, you know, made over the past two or three years, um, interacting directly with something from uh, the mid-90s, but something from the mid-90s following a, a hardware design pattern, which, you know, stretches back to the uh, 70s at least. Um, not 60s, I don't think, probably, but don't quote me. But, uh, yeah, okay, so I guess that's all. Um, not really sure what I'm going to do for my next video, but, um, you know, I do hope to have another one up, you know, within within a week or so, um, to sort of try and get everybody caught up on the work that I've done uh, during the, the huge gap between videos that I let elapse recently. Um, yeah, okay, so I'll have something up again fairly soon. Uh, please look forward to it, and thank you for watching. Bye.